support for the looks of it. Looks like they might be tri laning. All of them heading top. TC handling the lone druid. J.O. going to be playing the Prophet. Maybe it will be the tri lane for complexity, but this is very, very dangerous. Navi have a lot of good defensive capabilities. I'll let you introduce them. This is something different for complexity. All right, Havolz. Wait, you, by them you meant you meant Navi, right? <laughs> Yeah, something different for complexity, but I'll let you introduce Navi. So. Okay, just to make sure on the same page, because I was a little bit of brain fart. Alright, Light of Heaven's going to be handling the Bounty Hunter, because you always introduce the Dire Cyphers. You kind of switch I, I just introduce whoever I'm talking about or wherever my camera is. There is no rhyme or reason, just to troll you, confuse you as much as possible, because that's how I show my love, man. That's how I show All my right, love. Alright, Havos. Havos is going to be handling the Storm Surge. Puppy on the Sand King here. Ours are playing the Venomancer once again. Dendi, of course, on that Invoker. And we might see a very, very big engagement on top of that ramp. It seems like Dyer knows exactly where they are. They're paying that position out. But complexity. There's a. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna die here, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I've been wrong before. Flop, bro, strike. Oh no, the Gale hits a two. The pull back in, leap away, but they can give chase. There's another bro strike available. TC with the DD rune might end up getting the first blood himself. Look how quickly he's cleaving for Puppy. Puppy gets the first blood. Now they turn on to Arsar. One kill going for complexity. They want more. They want Arsar. They're gonna find him. Double kill going back though. TC didn't get both, but he does so much damage. Too fun. First blood does go the way of Navi, but complexity. Finally a decent start. Sure they give up a first blood, but they get two kills of their own. Oh, Marana dying so early. That was unfortunate, but in uh, that's absolutely fine. It's a support Marana. No problem, man. But yeah, it, well, it's, it's still a problem. It's still a problem. He now has leap. He now has leap in a tri lane. That's a huge problem. That means what is he going to do until he that's hits level point. 2? He's not going to hit level 2 for a long time. It's a low also, druid on the, on tri lane. Tri -lane, you don't have creep pool as an option. So basically, Venge, either he has to just sit out of the lane to let Marana to reach up to 2, or they don't do anything for a long, long time. That's a huge problem it's, in my book. It's also it's also a low druid tri lane. This is, so, this is the second time we've seen complexity run it. It's a better start than they had the last time they did. It's a different hero composition. But running Lone Druid as a tri-lane hero, well, you know, let's talk about, well, first of all, it is going to be, it's a lane that has a lot of lane control early, because you basically have four heroes, the bear, and the three heroes to work with, so a lot of right-click damage, a lot of lane control. But the big downside is Lone Druid needs levels, he needs farm, and he's in the off lane, and look at what Navi's doing. They're pulling, they've already got a double stack going, might even see the small camp being pulled soon. What are your thoughts on this offensive tri lane? I mean, not just the Marana Venge, which is a little bit unusual, but then Lone Druid is the farmer in the tri lane. I really think that both trialing is extremely, extremely defensive, right? On one side, there's Leak, there's a lot of HP, there's stuns. On the other side, there's Gale, there's Sandstorm. It's gonna be hard for either side to get the kill. And I think in broad dairy terms, that that favors the, the Dire, because they have options. <laughs> they have options. They can pull. They can do a lot of stuff. Meanwhile, you know, Radiant, they're leeching, leeching to level 2 for that arrow on fluff and stuff still. And Stormster, if you give him that start, uh, strong start, he is gonna punish you in the mid-game. Mmm, puppy. He's thinking about it. He wants to go in. Nope, he's not going to. And Fluff is going to continue doing that pulling. Already ate a tree. Nice job here by Complexity. Good pull time. It looks like they will draw the creeps back. Puppy's going to try and contest this, but this is real hard for him to do. We haven't talked about the other lanes. I'll ask you to keep an eye on that top lane while I check. But Jo going to be heading mid. He's mid up against Sandy's Invoker. One of the best, if not the best, Invoker in the world. Taking a lot of damage though right now uh, is Jo. Jo still leading the way in terms of farm, 12 and 2, 13 and 2 now. Farming really well. Dendi not quite as well, but getting some levels, getting some farm of his own. Puppy has rotated in, and meanwhile bottom lane, it's Light of Heaven on the on the bounty hunter up against the Tide Hunter. And I was talking about how bounty hunter's tower can get pushed down early if it's a lone druid there and a prophet TP's in. I've been thrown for a loop because it's a Tide Hunter. Yes, he's getting farm, he's getting levels, but so too is Light of Heaven on the bounty hunter. Marana on the top lane slowly looking for the arrow. Here's the thing, there's very little chance for Complex to set up that arrow magic missile combo. Like LD mentioned earlier, that stun isn't the longest uh, longest duration for the Ventral Spirit. Perhaps, well, they, they know the creep wave is now being pushed. I don't think they want to fight over this though, because there's so Aww. many creeps in position. Are they? No, no, they're going to try to get them some last hit. Fluff and stuff steals one, that's pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Now, Puppy uh -oh. looking for IX my IX my getting the leap bonus in terms of MS here. Are they going to turn around and fight this? They can. They actually can turn around and fight this. Uh, but Ooh, now here comes the Storm Surge. Both, both teams gathering position. And I think the Siege Unit and the Range Tree will kind of capture these guys back into lane. 
I don't know if they really could have fought that one. By the way, that leap just made it over the cliff there. If Fluff had done it maybe .005 seconds sooner, he ends up running into the tree line there, not getting over the cliff, and then that's an easy kill there. Sure, it wouldn't be a first blood, but if they give up a kill in this lane, it's going to be big trouble. For me, the big thing right now for Complexity, sure, they're not really crushing this tri lane. In fact, they'd say Navi is getting the edge here because of all the pulse that's coming their way. They have a Tidehunter who's almost level 6. They have a yep. Prophet who's getting good farm. If those two decide to come top, which is how we normally see Complexity run these offensive tri lanes, is with those two solos coming in, they can easily get three kills and push down a tower. So I actually like Complexity's position quite a bit right now, even though on paper they might be a bit behind. Well, now, to be fair, also, with that said, right, once a Light of Heaven gets 6, he could also very easily TP on top and start getting some track kill. You know that Invoker is constantly there. Oh, no, Dendi, I do not see any Exorb points. He is going for EMP Tornado, which, to be fair, against this lineup, the Mana Burn is going to be absolutely insane. The crowd control is absolutely necessary. Uh, so, But we are going to be missing those Sun Strikes, especially in those uh, really, uh, you know, trade-off engagement on the top. A big smoke gang all the way from the top lane to the bottom, wrap around for this mid game. Wow, Puppy is running a thousand mile across the land right now. Some big tree at the deep bar thing going on here. The cold snap onto Jail. Burrow strike, nice job. Magic missile followed by the arrow. Puppy might be the, the claim here. Sentry board gets dropped. Complexity is prepared. They find one. Tornado on two, but now they're on the back foot. Prophet all bounces through. And that's going to be the end of the engagement. Thought they might even be a little more aggressive for that. You talked about the EMP Tornado build, and it is very potent at shutting down pushes and giving you that control. But had a Montana already has Arcane Boots, the thing for me is who's going to get that second pair? Normally you need two or three to deal with the EMP properly. Not right now. It's only a level one Wex now. But let's say in five, ten minutes. At that point, if Venge gets a pair, maybe, I guess it's either Venge or it could be, it could even be Fluff and stuff on this. I've been saying Marana. it for all these years. Arcane Marana, the new meta. Fluff is going to be coming, for sure. I'm faithing you, Fluff. <laughs> and Fluff we trust. Yeah, Last game Fluff. it was Dendi, now it's Fluff. Man, that was so catchy. I'm just going to abuse the crap out of that one. Beat it into the ground before you know it. Let's look at top lane. It's TC farming. He's got boots up on the hero, boots up on the bear. It's a tri lane. He's still Ooh. hitting five. All oh, arrow just missing. Will it be a first hit and tangle? It will not. But TC still getting decent levels here. He's level five at six minutes in because the two supports left the lane. Havos getting good farm as well. But for me, the big thing is that off lane lone druid is getting close to six. He hasn't been dying. The last time TC was seen in the offense of tri lane lone druid, he died a lot. His six was so delayed. This time around, that's not going to be the case. Oh, here's the thing though, Navi, once Sorcerer gets 6, once Bounty Hunter gets 6, the gank is gonna happen. It's very, very rare to see Navi have a gank lineup that is really dependent on the level 6. They usually like to play a gank lineup that could go right at 2, or even at 1 at points, but this time it's gonna be delaying a little bit. So right now, Complex is enjoying their moment of peace, but viewers at home, don't be fooled by it. Once, once 6 is here, and once Nightfall is here, the action will be turned on. Magic oh, Ryan Right on the long arrow, that is gonna hit Puppy instead. They will focus on Puppy. No big deal, do they have detection? No detection necessary. The long arrow is gonna be able to do it. Arzar gonna immediately eat out of that tree. I wanna Bottom say lane, Ravage for Light of Heaven. Hannah Montana gets him in Viz. Great solo kill there. So complexity get two. Five wow. to one is their score. Is and now they're threatening both attack. towers, bottom and top. Wow, that's really, really good. I did not expect a solo kill against a bounty hunter. Fluff and stuff was leveling arrow. Man, you gotta have balls of seal to actually do this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna hit on the top. Can they get off the magic missile? Any entangle? There's a magic entangle for the kill. Yes. Killing spree. Havos buys back. He does not want to mess. Teleportation comes on the top lane here. That is gonna be a light of heaven. Was that Den the rage? Dandy who? Dandy who? <laughs> Not to take anything away from Dandy, his punch was amazing. But these this support Marana leveling up arrow. Still no boots for Fluff, but who needs boots when you have when you have that sniper-like ability to hit these arrows? Setting up kills left, right, and center for his team. Havos, or excuse me, Havos. Fluff is playing out of his mind right now. Oh, Fluffy. To be honest, I know he's playing well. He got to pick up some boots. And is that on the current? Yep, that's his. And Finally. I Venge Spirit will st still be ganking, but look at Puppy with the haste ring. <laughs> looking for a gank. Jail tucked between his tower. Half the mechanism finish. What a mech rush. Man, 8 minutes in the game when people have 800 HP. A mech. It's like 30% of your health. That's absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah, Jail rushing the mech. Very reminiscent of how Xiao8 likes to play his... Uh, his 
profit or uh, actually getting the quick mech, always joining the fights, and then going back for a Midas. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what J.O. wants to do in this game. That quick mech is just so powerful, especially when you're up against Navi's attack. lineup, right? A very reliant on burst damage, reliant on getting quick kills, but TP in, drop a mech charge, and suddenly a fight, easy kills for Navi, easy trap gold in their pocket, is a big turnaround going the way of complexity. A Volt's level 6, but it seems like he doesn't know where he could be. Complexity, very defensive uh, on the right time. They're using Tide Hunter to set up bait. You see Fluff and stuff and x Mike just chilling by him right now. Hana Mantana do not have that ultimate just yet. Still a couple of seconds away. But if Puppy like decides to Burrow Strike in, that could be the end of him. Oh, they want him. Gush, Magic Missile. Do they have Vision? Dust pops right before it hits. Perfect coordination there. Prop it all just for the punctuation mark on top of it all. They get the kill, and now they're pressuring the tower. That arrow, level two, he didn't choose to level up more. Fluff, color me disappointed, but this is the smarter, safer play. <laughs> Getting these kills, of course, freeing up TC on the top lane. Phase boots picked up, has that level seven, the bear is maxed out. TC is looking good. Overall complexity. Navi not getting to do what they want at all. 7 to 1 is their score, but it's not a Navi game unless they're down by a billion kills and still very even in every other respect. Only not, hasn't lost a single tower. In terms of golden experience deficit, barely behind it all. Yeah, barely behind all, and I think that's a key point here. On the top lane, though, TC still pressuring this tower. They're sending Puppy on the top lane. I'd like to see him get level 6 and perhaps get a level of uh, creep kills, but it's going to be so difficult to actually farm against TC. Again, if you stay next to the creep way too long, the bear is going to be sent on you. You're taking a little bit of uh, hits. There you go. The right hit's coming on against Puppy. If a single entangle really means he's going to take a lot more physical right hits. The Storm Spirit, the Bounty Hunter, turning 6, they haven't done a single thing. And I think no. that's the thing that's keeping Navi back. They couldn't do anything. They just have no opening. It's so hard to find the openings because you're up against Ravage, you're up against Profit and TPs and drops the mech. This is not an easy team to find those kills against. It's complexity's draft, the, the way they lane it, the attack. fact that Tidehunter's already level 9. Hanon's Montana might get some flax from his team for feeding fallen. occasionally, but this is a terrifying Tidehunter. Rain of Health picked up, Arcane Boots on as well. 1500 gold, does he want to go back for the blink? That would give them some insane initiation. Or either way, it's either that or a Hood of Defiance, which will be up soon. Complexity is in such a good spot right now because Navi built a team around getting ganked, around being aggressive. That's why you pick Storm, and especially why that's, that's why you pick Bounty Hunter. But really, like you said, where are the openings? Yeah, there is no opening right now. Despite the fact that there's not too many wards down from the Radiant side either. Bottle gets picked up here from Marana. There's a smoke on her. So ready to set up even more gank. But for now, uh, IX Mike and Marana roaming us up here, making sure none of the solos are getting ganked. They, they went down on the bottom and to push it. Oh, they go with the arrow. He shoots. Bang! It hits. Dandy trying to go in, but the detection is already there. Dandy three man. Oh, there's a dust. And that is gonna be it. They get the kill, but we all top lane light up heaven circle around looking for the backstep. TC will be a much more difficult beast to kill off. This bear is big and he's scary, but there's the track to start things off. Long range zip from Havos. Epicenter gets chattel. Puppy wants this one. He wants it bad. He will get it. But look at how much they have to invest. And the question is, do they get anything else beyond that kill? It doesn't look like it works for Complexity. They knocked down the tier one mid. I still think Complexity is in a great spot, but that was a trap kill, and that will help Navi's gold situation out. Definitely, definitely. You see a Tire Hunter is picking up Hood, so instead of Blink, he just want to bull rush in. Provide pipe, pipe uh, bonus to his team, and that pipe will mean quite a bit against a Sanking Epicenter, uh, should it become a problem much later on. I do believe the team still need a little bit more armor value, because Track, Janata, all of them do, crit, you know, well, it affects your armor, it affects your physical survivability on that end. Uh, so getting a little bit of HP and armor for the entire team would be pretty good. The mech's gonna provide quite a bit, but if we see a really blast from PC, uh, that wouldn't be too much of a surprise for me either. Yeah, whatever he wants to go for, he's getting it, and he's getting it with a little confidence. Trialing, there was a lot of pulling. He didn't really have the best laning situation. He's not the lead farmer Dyer's by any top means, top but he hasn't been dying uh, too much. He got his one death with three kills in his name. Overall, TC doing his job, doing it well, and now Hannah Montana, level 10. It was a hood that he went for, spent that 1500 gold, picked up the hood, now another 1000. With this tower, if he gets the last Radiant's hit, he's pretty much got a fight, but they want to give it to TC, the hard carry. He will last hit it. 2300 gold in the bank. 
Will it finally be the Alley 2000 build? Will it be that Maelstrom, or are they going to stick with the, the sort of tried and true method? Go for Radiance. I feel either one would Radiance be great this game. Tower is under I think this is a game where you can actually just go for the Maelstrom build and go for a big, bottom big lane. push bot lane. A lot of people are teleporting in, but Hannah, he's got the ultimate. The track is giving bonus Dyer's MS to Puppy. You can see he's moving so attack. fast, but the oh, arrow barely is going to miss. Where's the Sprout? There is the Sprout. That Ravage will hit for sure. He's going to go for it. No Ravage. Hannah, tower it's going to pop the Ravage for this. Oh! Oh, what a TP from the fog! Puppy, yeah. sick escapes. I'm not sure Hannah knew he was there. He he suspected it, but wasn't positive there was a TP out. Don't want to waste the Ravage there. I think it's the right decision overall. Again, even though Navi tries to dive, but it's a Tidehunter. You can't dive this guy. Even if you get him low, he's going to drop Ravage. Kraken Show will be procking. And then your three heroes, Ravage Under Tower, but middle lane is Arsart, who is in a lot of trouble. Swap from Ix Mike. The Gale, uh, no, the Magic Missile, rather. A Arsart will take a fall, and that's a kill going into TC's pockets. Who needs creeps when you're getting kills like this? Radiance the Relic, fast approaching if that's the route he wants to take. Goodness gracious, Complexity has not lost a single tower against one of the best tower pushing team in the in the world. I just meant to say country, but definitely not <laughs> American as Navi. But right now, Complexity keeping every single tower alive. There is just stymie any type of aggression. They haven't even had to use a rapture. for it. The only rapture that's been used so far is against the solo kill, right? For, against a bounty hunter. That's it. That's it, and the other thing I want to point out is about a second, you know, holding onto these towers means that your team's net worth is just so high overall. A second yep. ago, Dendi was actually behind the Tidehunter. I, I guess that was because something was being delivered to him, actually, so that's why. But even so, three of the top four heroes, all of the farmers on Complexity leading the way, and even the supports, the Marana has something. IX Mike is really in the gutter, but he's got his boots, and more importantly, he's level 7. Couple points at every ability, interesting choice, but it kind of makes sense. You've got a lone druid who provides some good physical DPS. You've got Gush, more minus armor for the team. Do you really want to max out the nuke, or do you want to shoot more towards the mid to late game? Give those damage, the right click damage dealer and TC, a little bit more to work with. <laughs> Such an awkward build, but here comes a mid gank and a light of heaven. They do track on TC. Burrow Strike, Epicenter, Storm coming from a mile away. They will find TC. The question is, how much are they going to have to pay in response to this very position? But there's Invoker in. Oh, Invoker's going to get themselves yet yeah, another kill. There's a track, and there's a kill. Two traps on the floor, and nothing to turn Dendi. Trap, shooting, mass protection after killing the Ben. So Dendi is going to go invis. Ravage just used for Dendi. Wow. Wow. Hannah says, Ben, you were hooking me last game. Here's some. Return. Well, he didn't have an opening to use it in the big fight here. If, if he had used it back in that fight, it would have been almost cooled down. So I think Hannah's just like, all right, man, I'm not going to wait for the perfect opening. I'm just going to make sure I use the damn spell. In the end, though, it was IX Mike who desperately wanted to swap TC down from the cliff, but it's only a level one swap. Did not have the range to do so. That's why he ran straight into the MP Tornado, doing his job trying to find that swap. Just a bit out of range there. Misestimated just a touch, and in the end, it doesn't work out. Fluff, Hastern bottled up. Treads picked up. Looking towards mid lane, they want Arsart. Hastern is popped. They're not going to make a go in the end. Yep. Those two track kills, by the way, mean so much for Navi. Uh, ju not just for the EXP, but also for the big gold, because they're down by a couple thousand gold right now. That's going to allow the gold chart to dip down a little bit. And of course, that's going to improve the net worth of everybody in your team, including like the percent who's just struggling at this moment right now. Complexity is generally a team. Ooh, they're gonna, there's a big game on the top of your puppy. He's going to TP out. No entangle. Bounty Hunter is sort of here. Are they going to blind us to find him? Nope, they're not. Complexity is generally a team that's in Navi's positioning. Uh, they want to be playing for the late game. They are defensive. Uh -oh. they, how they see him? Gem. They have a gem. Wow, what a early gem. And that's going to be here. Arrow attack. just throws a chainsaw. Such an early gem means that Navi will have no wards on the map. And if you look at the meme map, there is none. I love it because Hannah Montana is hes pretty much unkillable at this point. He is right. a skyscraper of a hero. 1100 HP, level 1 crack and Shell, level 2 Ravage, the Anchor Smash to reduce any damage that comes his way. They can't, they, I just don't see them killing him. Maybe if they use Dyer's every single ability perfectly, they can kill him off. But otherwise, he's getting off the Ravage, Dyer's and as long as the team's there, that means his team's going to win that fight. Radiant so a gem on a hero this fast, how is he going to lose it? How are Navi going to get it away from him? I just don't know. Tier 2 on the top lane is going to be done here. And one thing I really want to plot in Complexity, Radiance they just want to protect as many towers as possible. A lot of players, Radiance a lot of teams will be like, yeah, fallen. you can take our tier 1, uh, we'll take your tier 2. But Complexity says, we'll take your tier 2 and we'll defer your tier 1. Tier 1 bot. Nothing they could have done about that tier 1 mid though. The rotation come from Navi, they want to go for the bot tower. I'm not sure. Well, if if, if Hannah's going to be back up like this, uh, they can take this. Ravage is going to be back up really, really soon.
Here comes Navi Radiant's on the bottom lane. Tower they were smoked up looking attack. for an opening. Not going to find it, but they will find the tower. It looks like Daddy is going for a Yule Scepter, uh, which is a decent item, especially against Lone Druid. You can throw the bear up in the air. That's a very powerful way to try and deal with it, run away, uh, or just throw the Tidehunter away when he charges in, trying to avoid the Ravage. So I like the choice. It's also easy to build. Uh, and it's, oh, there you go, it's actually completed. I really like the item selection from Dendi. As far as other item pickups, are we seeing anything big? Midas on Jail, he went back for that. I believe he's had it for about five minutes or so now. But yep. this is this is pretty much that Shao 8 build that I was talking about. Get the early mechanism, then go back for the Midas to amp up your farm. That'll help them deal with the Bounty Hunter track bolt that's going the way of Navi. Complexity overall in a really good position. Are they good enough, uh, is the position good enough to go for Roshan? Maybe, yep. they think so. There's minus armor being provided by IX Mike. If Hannah wants to gush it, there's even more minus armor. There's a pipe, and they have a lot of detection, I and mean, they have a gem for sake, so, uh, you know, they, they, I think they're ready. I think they're ready. And then Navi, they're not showing any type of defense. He might come right now in the form of Tornado. TC's gonna be tempting the Roshan, no big deal. And he's gonna grab himself. Roshan! Marana will even use Interesting. But it's done right under some plague work, so. <laughs> yeah, so, pro so no ward shall stand before this gem is pretty much what we're seeing right now. Navi are playing absolutely in the dark. They have no idea what's going on around the map, except when they see enemy heroes. And even if they did have the vision, how do they pick a fight? We talked about no easy kills. It's not like it's gotten any easier for them to find them. Radiant should be up on TC momentarily. 400 gold for that. Age is back, and I know you love to talk about this. This means even if you kill the hero, the bear is still doing the big damage. The yeah. entire time the hero is dead before it respawns. Dendi looking for TC. Cold Snap tries to some harassment, but up uh, track on the Hannah Montana. They will back off. In comes the TP, and here's the split push. A little bit of a taste of the CG, I want to say, with that Storm Spirit pressuring the bottom lane. A different build, though, but middle lane. Both teams looking for the opening. Tornado fight through is going to hit on Adam Akata. But both teams need to get done. Where's the arrow? No arrow just yet. One party used it. The Ravage just to kill off a both. Pipe gets popped. Ice wall pretty good, hitting on three. But they get one kill. The question is, is that kill enough to continue pushing? I mean, they're gonna say their ground silver is at least gonna try to do a little bit more damage through the tower. Storms are, I think, as soon as Storm rides back, they'll back off. If there's no buyback, they'll keep pushing until he's back alive. There's a tower. Yep, they basically just man up and bulldozer their way in. Complex, complexity is gonna take that uh, tower basically for uh, free. Uh oh, this guy gonna be okay. Yeah, he should be. Oh, maybe not if there's cold snap and track on top in this team. Just basically. Babysitting, is... trying to get him out there. Look at how fast Navi starts chasing. Offensive fuel scepter being dropped. DC should be fine. The blink at the center from Puppy out of nowhere. Wow, Navi turned this around. A lot of those kills are track bonus kills. So right now, everybody is fading in dollar bills here on Navi camps. Burrow Strike's gonna hit again. Oh, he's gonna lose his agents very quick. Unfortunately, that bear is not doing enough damage. He's gonna respawn back in human form. Puppy bringing his team back with that big epicenter. Both of the Furo Shrike, and I do believe TC will be going down again. Oh, big arrow coming from Swamp and stuff. Starstorm hitting on Light of Heaven, Light of Heaven. Oh, detection. Now, there's a gem here Radiant's on Hannah. Well, somebody had detection. They're going to get the kill. Fluff looking for more chase, but he's got to be very careful. There's a storm nearby. It's time to back off. But what a team fight from Navi. So, stubbornly, the gold graph will not budge. It was a great <laughs> team fight for them, but complexity still in a commanding position here. They do lose the ages. For me, that's the big thing coming out of that fight. Radiance was purchased before that Lone Druid went down. They were fighting without a Ravage. And I think for complexity, they just needed to back a little bit sooner. They stayed a second or two too long. But credit Navi, they choose their spots wisely. Puppy hits level 11 off of that fight. That means the next epicenter is going to hurt a lot more. And with the pipe being down, that was the other main factor there. Perfect timing for Navi. The tornado hitting on multiple here, setting everything up. It's hard to run from Navi. Complexity, are, they're the brick wall. They're sort of that unstop, that immovable object. But Navi might be the unstoppable force. At least if, they, if you have to run from them, good luck getting away. Yeah, track, storm straight, blink dagger on Sanking. It's it's too much. I didn't know how. Where did Puppy pull this one out? Because he was getting no farm. He was playing support. He was roaming all the map. But when you just do sneak up that uh, blink dagger on them, it's big damage, and we saw it right there. It is 23 minutes in, so it's not super early. I believe he had 1600 gold, like a couple minutes before the fight. But we've seen a lot of support heroes who can farm a blink, especially Earthshaker players, I want to say. Uh, it's just, you know, not a very good hero for farming who struggle to pick it up. So, uh, to me, it's the, it's just the timing of it that was so perfect for Navi. A lot of teams would just let Complexity back off after that fight. It, why would you think you could win one? I mean, their Tidehunter's absolutely massive, but they found the opening and they pounced. 
They're behind. They're still behind. Here comes the push. Ravage is available. Complex are going to get the last outer tower. Navi doing the smart thing. Going for the trade. BKB getting close on Havos. That's a big item to pick up. Then you don't have to worry about Ravage. And Storm can always dip out of the tank, so that's not going to be an issue either. Ajax Mike looking for Swap on Arcer. Not going to find it. Middle lane, the pressure comes in. DD run on Havos. But Complexi are going to maneuver towards the high ground. They get onto the high ground. Not, is Navi really going to try and base trade? I don't feel they can. This tower is dropping fast. There's the glyph. Uh oh, Radiance this could be trouble tower. even if Navi joins the fight. Radiance How are they going to deal with this Tidehunter? Maybe the Yule Scepter will be the solution. Tornado, Stephanie Flash, as well as the meter. It all gets dropped. The Anthem Center, the Blink in, the pipe though. It gets used. Everybody alive, everybody healthy. The big burst damage. Ravage whips completely. Only catches Light of Heaven. Will it be enough? They're probably going to back off now. Zip in. Dendi blinks in as well. Such aggressive item choices. Burrow strike in. Another fight. Another engagement for Navi. They get one, they get two, and the chase again. Continues. Another dip in from Havos. TP out from Jail. Jail trying to get away. Adam on that as well. Are they all going to escape? One gets out. Jail will not. Two in the end. They get three, but they lose the tier three. Was it worth it? It was completely worth it because tier two was claimed on the mid lane here. Another big epicenter by Puppy. My camera was on him the whole time. He smoked for that one, so nobody saw him. He came in, of course, Storm to follow, and of course, a TC getting focused off defensive swap, even used for him. It was not enough. The difference between dropping the pipe before you, you get hit by the epicenter and the difference uh, after I after you get hit, like that's a day and night difference, and because. Uh, Fluff was a little bit late on the pipe. They, their team just got whooped. And also, that Ravage. I have not actually seen a Ravage in this game that hit more than two heroes so far. Early on, I know he was using for, you know, Ravage solo kills. But for now, he got to hit at least three or four. And he's just not happening thanks to Navi's great positioning. Right now, Navi, I think they're back in this game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The graphs agree with you as well. And they're a team that, if for Navi, if they get enough items, they're just so mobile around the map that they can really pick off complexity and kind of pull them apart at the seams. But Hannah Montana, sure, that Ravage doesn't hit. But he's got enough gold for a Blink Dagger now. So if he had trouble finding the openings before, he's got to be able to find them with this, right? I just can't imagine him not. It's going to come down to some really amazing positional play from Navi to prevent it. But there's a BKB up on Havos now. It's a Bounty Hunter with 3,800 gold. Lord Almighty, Light of Heaven is getting farmed. The only player ahead of him is Jo, who's close to a sight device of his own. But this could be a BKB for Light of Heaven. And then two BKBs. Ravage is not going to do a thing if Navi gets them off in time. Going to check out how many buybacks we have right now on the Navi squad. They have... Uh, they have like two. They have two buybacks. Uh, the question is, will Radiant push? That's the thing. No, complexity. Mm -hmm. Perhaps looking for a smoking, they do, and thankfully they did not smoke right under a uh, ward. So they're looking for a little bit of action. Look at how many wards are on the map, man. Both both these games, game one, the Pudge was, uh, you know, forcing a lot of wards out from complexity. This game, both teams are just warding like crazy. Unfortunately, and they just don't find the opening. And notice how they're all concentrated towards the bottom side of the map as well. Yep. It's not even just about Roshan, it's also about Navi knowing that Complexity wanted to push that tier 2 bottom because it was the last outer tower remaining, and setting up those wards in advance, but primarily of course it is about Roshan. Just the, the focus of the wards, so interesting to see where they're located right now. TC, looks like he's going for a Vlaz, he has the Radiance up. I hear some zipping that's just a Vos farming. I always get nervous and excited <laughs> when I hear that storm. Hey, no, it's me! <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's either getting a kill or he's getting killed. Um, you talked about the mobility item choice here on Ty Hunter. You, you talked about being a blink. I actually like the force up a lot more here. I'm glad he picked it up. And the reason being so is a lot of times he gets initiate upon and your blink dagger will get cancelled. There's like a billion way to cancel it. Poison Nova, Poison Sting, uh, or excuse me, the, the play boards, Storm. Oh, nice sit back here. He realized he was getting ganked. And uh, yeah, the force up allows him to get initiate on and still force up in it for the big, big ravage. But what worries me is the pipe. Will he pop it in time? Yeah, he'll get it off, but like, I mean, it's not really about saving himself, it's about protecting his team for yes, Adam Montana. He'll attack. definitely get it off for himself, but will he get it for his team? I'm not sure. Two TPs in top. Are they actually going to make it go? Adam Montana on the front line, BKB is scored. Jail looking for the sprout. No way to cancel this TP. Light of Heaven will escape, and the multiple BKBs allowing Navi to be so much more aggressive than they could be. Everyone gets away at the expense of a BKB charge, but multiple TPs to go the other way. Not a bad trade for Navi. They dodge a bullet there, but they can dodge bullets with ease as long as these BKBs are up. Yep. 
Now, when BKB is getting lower and lower duration, that's when your selling becomes better and better as a hero because you're folk, you're basically having 4,000 uh, gold worth by the not doing too much uh, if it gets down to five seconds. But that's still a very, very long way from now. Dandy getting some farm up. Blink Dagger is up. We see Blink Dagger a lot of time on more exhort based invokers so you could dance around team fight and drop your, you know, harder aim but high DPS spells. On, on more of an EMP tornado though, I'm not too sure what is needed. I mean, I, I feel what? like he should be working Really, towards... what is this? Yeah. I'm trying to think, what does this do for him? It's, you know, we see him get on a Windrunner, but that lines up your shackle shots. It's Dandy. He always loves his positional play. He loves just you know, physically outskilling his opponents with his better hand speed, attack. his better co coordination and concentration. But I really don't know how much this does for you. Oh, Zip is so close. They're both oddly in the middle of And Jo looking for Denny. Denny gets stunned. Blink Tiger will not save you now. Even if it's a four step, he's going down there. Another great arrow from Clough and stuff. This support Murata, man. You know, the thing is, he's not offering his team too much except for those arrows, but boy, are the arrows delivering. Yeah, I mean he's getting drums. He has moonlight shadow, so it's it's small but it's small but very important stuff that he's offering for his team. Now, I mean going back to the blink dagger point, one thing it's a very decent escape mechanism if you get use use sector and blink out afterwards. Also, it's a very very decent way to set up a, a very beautiful ice wall. There's a lot of melee heroes on the radiant side, so if you get ice wall on a couple of them, that's pretty big. But yeah, I, I much prefer Hex Scepter myself, I much prefer seeing Hexes, but it's Dendi, let's not question him. The, the, however, the um, unfortunate Roshan of the Roshan is going to go down, to the and TC is going to pick it up. Well, they get another shot here. Complexity, they've had some blunders along the way, but they still have the ages. In terms of gold, they're hanging on. Experience, they're a bit behind, but really that difference in experience, call it dead even, because it's so irrelevant at this point. Hannah Montana, not le yet level 16. Ix might not, Ix Mike, not yet level 11. To me, those are the two big levels they want, and maybe Lone Druid hitting 16. But for me, Complexity pretty much has all their items. Lone Druid can get bigger, but there's so many ways to run away from Mkitem. Uh, the BKBs, meaning Tidehunter, is not reliable lockdown, at least until the durations get lowered. I'm not sure if Complexity want to farm all day. I feel like maybe Lone Druid is the strongest carry on the map, but Navi just had their resources in terms of damage spread out better. You have an Invoker, a Storm, and a Bounty Hunter. Great heroes for sort of surviving and sustaining these fights, if they're able to do so. I think they'll look good. What are your thoughts? Should Complexity be pressing now, or are they, should, are they just absolutely fine farming all day? I think they should be pressing, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Complexity on their smoke gank, a smoke game a gank again. Unfortunately, they're not gonna find too much. I do believe not. They yeah, look at Navi's position right now. It's like we know you're smoking. <laughs> We're gonna take a break as you're smoking out there. Not good for your lung, guys. That's what Navi's saying right now. And they'll just wait. Storm Spirit's gonna peek his head out because he has a zip. He has a BKB. So it's all good. Complexity smoke ganks, man. I mean, you gotta know that Complexity is gonna do this, whether they're ahead or behind. If any team looks for smoke ganks, it is absolutely Complexity. Far and away, it's not even close. They rely on them heavenly. Oh, heavenly. <laughs> there you go, I think it's Light of Heaven. Uh, they rely on them heavily, but, uh, you know, they don't find one, so I think they're okay. I would like to see them think about... They don't have to go for racks yet, but just put some pressure on these towers. Keep Navi in their base, don't let them farm the way they are. Uh, because to me, Navi, again, they have so many heroes that will scale really well with items. For Complexity, it's really only the Lone Druid. In theory, Marana does, but she's just so far behind. No way she's going to be a big damage dealer this game. I don't think saying she's far behind is a fair... I mean, she's been, basically been playing support, semi-support. Well, yeah, but, uh, she's she's, but she is a support Marana, yeah, yeah, to be she's fair. Playing support. So the drums is fine. Uh, if she ever picks up... But yeah, sure, that'd be pretty good. I prefer now, like, you know, she's like just a range, a big glorified range creep that arrow sometimes. And of course, I think they are looking at that high ground. They're looking for a pickup, perhaps. You know, really the lane they should be pushing is bottom. That's where the racks are exposed. It's, it's one of these things where I think they just, they go mid because that's where the creeps are, that's where the heroes are. But they're going to rotate bottom now. Two heroes rotate in. I expect to see the rest of them following shortly. Maybe stay behind for a few moments time to get the other lanes pushed out. No real item progression for Complexity, nothing big anyway. There is a Vlad's up on TC. They've had the Hex up for a while. Zipping away is the most TPing out. He's got an Ultimate Orb. I'm not sure there's another big item coming anytime soon. Hyperstone up on Lone Druid's Bear. But yeah, really nothing too substantial. I think this is about it for Complexity. It looks like they want to push now. They have all their core items. They don't have any big luxury items. Will it be enough? We'll find out. Well, checking out the item here on the diet, and that event does not have that uh, Manta style yet, nor does Dendi have his Axe Scepter. BKB has been done on her Vols. I don't think he's close to his Hex, and that's pretty much it. Puppy working on BKB is not done, so this is a very precarious push. This push might determine how the game is going to be going. Checking out on buyback, Storm has one. 
Sankey has one. That's it. Here we go. Let's see what are we gonna see out of complexity. They gotta do in this push up for like Nature's Prophet picks up a hyper storm. Wow. Maybe it's gonna be an assault caress. I was thinking I was thinking it would be an assault caress for TC, but maybe that one is gonna be a Mjolnir. And the attack speed's always great on the bear, even if you don't upgrade it. Bear killing off wards, the treants walk in, the march in, I should say, and now they can start to work on the Rex. I think the thing here for complexity is don't commit too much, don't overextend, and keep your eyes peeled for Puppy. That blink into Epicenter is the big thing to watch out for. Avos waiting in the wings, but he can only disable one. He can't do that huge AoE damage. They start working on the Rax, the bear right-clicking as best it can. Not doing too much damage yet, is gonna take some return damage from the Janata. Might have having Yasha picked up, going towards Manta to deal with the attack. I like the choice a lot. And for complexity, I think they just keep on doing this. There's no reason to force it. Yeah, the bear is not taking enough damage, and this is this is a game where I wish you could actually see more of the screen. Like if the camera could zoom out a little bit more, because everybody's three or four screens away. Puppy, I need to see him. I also need to see the Avenge. I also need to see the Dendi, and they're too far away. But again, the slow siege is happening. It seems like complexity feels like they can't really do this. Yeah, yeah, they're not doing it quickly, but they have done some chip damage on the tower. The problem now is the wards are starting to mass up. Yeah. And I, I think in theory you can ignore them, but also the Janata really is hurting on the bear. Maybe a plate mail might have been a better choice instead of a hyper stone just to deal with some of that physical right click damage. There's the Marana ult. They want to initiate. Is there a ward to spot anything? TP gets cancelled well, by Prophet. They see TC. The TC's opening. tracked. So it's very awkwardly. Standing invis, but not oh, really. Oh man. Failed Marana ult. That's a mistake. Yeah, unfortunately. And does that thing has a high monocost and a high full damage, so not gonna be able to try that thing uh, in a long while. Just such a you know it's, this is the calm before the storm guys, so don't don't get too relaxed because any second now something huge could happen. Puppy runs out of the arrows path, crosses over it again. The bear right clicking away, can be resummoned. They're almost getting the rack. Where's the resummon? There you go. I think they have to back off now, but what they can do again is just maybe even wait for the bear to cool down. That's a long way to wait though. Are they really gonna force it? If this bear dies, that is the bulk of their damage off the books. Yeah, I mean, it's a risky play, but I mean, by having this push in the sub is risky. I think you keep going for it. Uh, maybe you can actually focus down on those uh, wards a little bit for now. Uh, but no, he's gonna go straight in that racks. There's is a still a glyph. The blink dagger from Dendi trying to really superman this by himself. Oh, his little top BK sold the flight of heaven. Oh, and Hannah can't actually use this Ravage because everybody's BK beat up. Ix might perhaps the first one to go down. Yes, indeed, he will laugh him so very low. He is going to get picked off as well. Is that just a one for one trade? Nobody dead. Bounty Hunter immediately buy back and Complexity just backs off. They can't really do anything about it. The Venge is not here. They really need the Venge. You guys might be staying at home. It's just a Venge. He's providing plus 20% damage for the team. Providing sight and that's the end of the club. It's so important. Again, the Storm Strait as well as the Bounty Hunter. They force out the buyback. I think that's pretty good. And now they're probably set up for a game. Or are they? This is Complexity. I was thinking maybe they'd smoke. They see Puppy. Dust! To start it off, the right clicks, will we get an entangle? Where is the entangle? Ravage on three, that's what they needed, that's what they get. Yes, we can, since complexity, they get two. They're looking for more light of heaven, sprouted up. What a long range sprout, seriously, man. That is a three-pointer as far as sprouts go. They want light of heaven, he's too damn fast. With the phase boots, with the drum charge, the last one being used. They get a couple kills, but the buybacks just won't stop. Navi, stubborn as all get out, hanging on quite well. But getting picked off here and there, maybe Complex are going to have enough to push in now. Crucially, the bears, the bear is available to resubmit momentarily. Dip in from a boss. Really, I had him on 10. It's not the one you want to focus. But a burrow strike on two. Tornado to follow. Navi looking real solid to start this fight off. Jail taking a lot of damage. BKB on a boss again. They want Jail. They can't get him just yet. Another zip. They will be able to kill him off, but he can buy back, I believe. Yes, he can. He could come back to life right now. Ix Mike going to fall as well. And how many times have we seen this movie in this game? Navi get a couple kills and then the chase is on and complexity beat, beat it the hell out of there running attack. for their lives how are they gonna break this defense Radiance well top the episode of the movie attack. that you might not have caught was the back door from lone Drew. i won't even call Dyer's it the back door because the screen was there attack. he was says forget the team fight mid this is called defense of the ancient or it was called that a while back, but now the Rax was not defended. They claim it, and Navi says, Oh man, we gotta do some critical damage right now, or we're gonna be in trouble as this game's gonna go on. Here comes big pressure on the mid lane, but I do believe Complexity could hold the hill. Man, Slow Bear, I think, just put themselves very far ahead by choosing not to participate in that team fight and go straight for the Rax.
He also has an assault cuirass now, and you know that's the that's the item that can let you easily get a second rack. So much armor, really gonna help out versus the bounty hunter. Even the even the uh, invoker does some pretty significant right click at this point. Plus with the forge spirits, Navi smoke barely out of range of the bear. But then they just run away. Looks like they just wanted to make sure they escape safely, and they will be able to do so. The, I guess the other point to be made, which I was not making, uh, is that Navi were forced to use multiple buybacks, me on or up on the profit, whereas Complexity really has not had to buy back that much this game. And that's why we see a decent gold lead, but more importantly, the net worth is quite high for the two core heroes, the Lone Druid and the Prophet leading the way. Complexity and Navi both teams smoked up, grinding, grinding positional, uh, and of course Roshan is going to be back very soon. What we're going to see probably is a wraparound gank like this, uh, but wards are up, uh, they're scoping out. If they see this Venomancer, oh no, this Venomancer is going to run into a whole bunch of heroes. Oh, Venomancer has no chance. If you're Complexity, go for Rosh or you go straight in for the Rax. Either way, either option is fantastic. Roche is not up for a minute. Looks like they want to push mid, and they should be able to do so. It's only a Venomancer, but this is a Venomancer with a mech, and more importantly, laying down the, the yeah, play boards to slow down the push. He had a great wall of Seattle up in that base on the bot lane, uh, and, and now it's not there, so now, I right now, they're, they're gonna just go straight in. I love it, man. Great wall of Seattle. You hear something new every day. Uh, our brains keep on churning, and they're gonna back off. Dyer's Maybe they, they're thinking Roche, and they had to run down the timer. Anybody not running down the timer in the International 2. Uh, well, they don't belong here, and of course, perfect timing. Down to basically the second arrow to start it off. Gush to follow, breaking the spell shield. And look how fast Roche melts. Oh boy, oh boy, ages and cheese. And Complexity, Jo has another 2,800 gold, 1,500 up on the Lone Druid. This death ball is looking rather unstoppable. Another buyback check is necessary. Does it? Is there any buyback on the Dire? And I see no, 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 no. And that's not so good here for the Dire squad. Complexity poised to take this game and even it up. Storm Spirit zips it. He gets hit. Do you want to ravish that? No, you don't. But they are going to get the kill regardless. What was that from the ball? Really aggressive play. I feel like Navi's pressing right now. Oh, Dendi, nice blink away, but just, you know, that's not a good sign when blinking away is a big play. Puppy at the center, completely wasted. Oh, huge wonder from him. Four step in. Ravage catches three. Puppy watches the wave, taking a lot of damage. Now they're going to get the rags, no question about that. The auras, the, as well as this lone druid and Jo on his prophet, way too big. They're going to turn multiple rags. This is Mega Creeps. This has got to be all she wrote. Navi still not able to find their first official 2-0 victory in this tournament. Complexity do it, they get their heroes, and they are smashing their way through Navi's base. Great individual play, flick it, first strike, they want IX Mike. No, Puppy will go down, they entangle this bear, absolutely rabid. Get it, Light of Heaven on the chase, will take a fall. Navi just feeding one by one, desperation time for them. GG gets called, and Complexity, they get another game under their belt. One to one, the final score for this series. But man, did Complexity have to work for it. They really, really had to work for it. But it's a roaming, or not roaming Rana, a semi supporter Rana, Dyer's helping his team to has take the way Hannah Montana with some uh, Ravage early on, but really soon to play the game. And it's GC and Jail, the most fun, taking the game for themselves. We are done for series number four of the day. So, four more game coming your way. We're gonna be here for all night, so don't go anywhere yourself. This is Lunas LD. We are done with Complexity versus Navi. Our next match is. AO versus CLG, I believe it may have been changed. Valve has been shifting things around on us. We'll let you know as soon as possible, but for now, it looks like it will be Absolute Legends versus CLG. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Uh, if you guys enjoy our casting, follow us twitter.com slash ldota, twitter.com slash luminousinverse, and follow the stream. We will be casting day two and three come your way, but before we do that, we have two more best out of twos, or two more group stage matches, I should say, come your way. Looks like Absolute Legend vs. CLG, and then the nightcap will be IG vs. Complexity. The players are tired, our voice is not giving out, but definitely strained a little bit, but we all soldier on to bring you guys some fantastic games. Hope you're enjoying them. They'll be coming back soon. Stay tuned, get your popcorn, but don't you dare leave your house.